Hello friends. So today's video is about feature requests for digital performer. Let's dig right in. First off, this is take one now. This is take one, okay? So today I want to talk about feature requests for digital performer. I'd throw a few suggestions out there. Everything would be cool. No big deal. I just thought we'd bang out a quick video because I have a couple of more ambitious videos in the hopper. But as it turns out, this turned into a real head scratcher. I can think of a bunch of great features that Digital Performer could have or features it already has that it could improve upon. That's the first thing. So we will talk about that. But also, I started thinking to myself, from the ground up, what could be done to actually make DP do two things? One is the Marie Kondo thing of sparking joy, and the other is being so intuitive, new users would actually flock to it. Now, I know that's a tall order, and that's the problem. Well, as I was researching this video, I realized that some of these new features that I wanted to see are actually in there already, but they're buried. And so I'm thinking to myself, what could we do to get them out in the open? Did you know that Digital Performer was once the highest selling sequencer package? Well, it's not anymore, but I know this, it's the best DAW out there. So why is that? Well, one thing I think is there's been an enormous amount of energy put into new features and functionality, but I don't feel like there's been a whole lot put into the interface. On the other hand, this is what Performer used to look like. So you can see we've come a long way at this point. Another thing I think is a lack of emphasis in marketing, which I'm not really gonna speak to in this video. I'd like to talk a little bit about mixer improvements. Now I've talked in previous videos about how the mixer works. And as you can see here on my MacBook 2019, it's too big to fit on the screen. And so what I'd like to do is be able to take some sections out and put them in. Now, if I hold down the option key and then I pick a section, I'll pick pan here, the only thing you see is the pans. If I hold down the command key and then I pick a section, I'll do pan again. And you can see everything but the pan shows up. Notice there, I don't have the pan in there because I command clicked pan. So I can click that. So I'm two clicks away from actually choosing everything in the mixer. But what I would like to do is to be able to choose sections. Okay, so first, there is a thing called board layouts, which we talked about before. Now, board layouts are found here, and they are project specific. If you can't assign a board layout to a key command, I'd like for that to change. Now, even if they stay project specific, in here in the view menu, you can assign track layouts to, I'm not gonna go into this right now other than to say even in just a project, you can assign them to a key command. That key command won't work in other projects, but that's a good start. But I'd like to see board layouts that port to all different projects. Now, obviously, any track layout is gonna be different in different projects. If you do a symphony one day and a rock band the next, you're gonna have different track layouts. But what about sections? If you look here in the board layouts and you look at the presets, there is a thing here that says show all sections, which will show all the sections of whatever tracks are showing. So if we could have something like that and have it be presets for every project, that would be great. Another thing is that I would like feedback about what board layout is shown. So I think that when you pick a layout, I picked Fred, that it should say Fred up here somewhere. And I think that it should be in italics when you change something. So if Fred is picked and then I decide I want to see the EQ graph, I think that it should say Fred here and Fred should be in italics. 
this would be similar to the tracks where this is not available so it's in italics. If I find a bundle that is available, it won't be italicized anymore. The next thing is I would like to see the board sections assigned like the track layout. So here's the track selector. Now I can drag over this and get rid of all the tracks. I can select singular tracks. I can command click to select everything but the track I selected. I can option click to select only a track. I can drag over them to select them all. And so it's a very quick way to select exactly the tracks you want. What if you could do the same thing with the mixer sections? Right now, when I go into the mixer tab and I look here, you have to check them one at a time. If I wanted that and that, and then I wanted this, and then maybe this, that's pretty cumbersome. So what I'd rather be able to do is have something that showed up like this, stuck there while you clicked on these, the same way I just demonstrated with the track selector. Another thing with these global mixer states that I'm talking about, if they could be pinned to the top of this menu, that would be fantastic. Because when you have to go into this, it's a bit cumbersome, particularly if you don't have key commands for them. Mixer section selection groups. Now, if you've ever used track groups on DP, you know how it works. Let's say you have 12 tracks of drums. You select one track, and when you click on that one track, all 12 tracks are selected. So it would be something like that. And I'll explain to you how this works in my use case. So we're looking right here at the mixing board with all the sections on it, and you can see it's a little too big for this display. And the faders are a little cramped here. I would like to see the faders be less cramped. Here's what I would get rid of. I would get rid of the EQ graph. I would get rid of the EQ controls. I would get rid of the dynamics graph. I would get rid of the dynamics controls. Now I know that took a long time to my point on the earlier things. But now I have a fairly nice channel strip that I can see. And I really don't use the dynamics controls and graphs and the EQ controls and graphs because we're all using a lot of third-party plugins and everything anyway. So what if those were a group? And then just by selecting one of them, all four of them could go away when you had the groups activated. Ooh, flip faders. Man, oh man, flip faders would be so nice. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the fader meter with the option key down, and there it is. Now what if you could flip these to be pans or sends? It would be unbelievable. Now watch, I'll hover here and see how it says fader? You could click this, and then you would pick whether it was the fader, the send, or the pans, or whatever. Uh, there'd be five or six choices because there's, depends on how many sends you have in a project. And again, just like I was suggesting with the board layout names, something here would say flipped pans. And then when you did this, you'd be all the way on the left. When you did this, you'd be all the way on the right. That is so much easier than doing this, going to every channel and doing this. I think we can make that happen. Now, I have a Raven, a Slate Raven, and the Raven will do this. I used to have an, a Mackie MCU. The Mackie would do this. But it would be really nice if it could do it natively because sometimes I'm just, I just have my laptop, that's it. And how great would it be to be able to set up a whole mix, the pans, or set up the sends for a headphone mix, or for your reverbs, or whatever like this? Just so great. All right, so we've come to that moment. We put it off long enough. Interface design. Interface design is very important. Now, if you look at the previous interface design, you can see we've come a long, long way. 
And so what am I complaining about? Well, I'm not complaining. I'm just thinking, how cool would it be if we upped our game? So a friend of mine told me long, long ago about this book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And he referenced a quote in that. And the quote is, if the machine produces tranquility, it's perfect. Okay, well, that's not really the quote, as it turns out, because I was researching this video and I looked up this quote. The test of the machine is the satisfaction it gives you. There isn't any other test. If the machine produces tranquility, it's right. If it disturbs you, it's wrong until either the machine or your mind is changed. Now, my wife and I live on Broadway in Manhattan, and it's really noisy here. So we got a noise machine, which basically just sounds like a fan, but it's not a fan. It's not blowing air. And I came to realize that that machine has an app that you have on your phone. That was so cool. So I got the app, and once I installed it and pulled it up, there's just a big button in the middle. And the big button is the on-off button. And when you press it, you see a number. And that number is how high the machine is going. And then down a little bit lower, there's buttons on either side to press so that you can make it go higher or lower in speed and thus volume. And then there's some smaller buttons at the top which give you screens like how you can set the timer or what light you want it to have on or calibration. But I was just so struck by the fact that that on-off button is huge and it's right in the middle. It's like it knows what you want it to do because you're not going to be calibrating it every day. You're not even going to be changing the speed of it every day. What you want to do is turn it off and on. And, you know, it's an unfair comparison, but how can DP actually imitate some of that behavior? So that seems to be thinking ahead of you. And I think one of the things is that you don't get feedback sometimes when you do something and just nothing happens. And we'll talk about that a little more later. Just to continue on this point, there's a few things that don't spark joy to me in the interface, and I want to talk about what those are. The first one is these drag handles in the sequence window that you see over here. They're just old-fashioned, really. They're old-fashioned. Uh, ditto with the song. If I go into the song, this right here, there used to be a lot more of this, but if you look around in the program, you will see there's iconography in here which could really use an update. And I think this kind of thing is a turnoff to new users. And then the last thing in this list is font size. So right now, I'm showing this to you on a 2019 MacBook Pro, the 16-inch version, and the font is teeny. Now, on my main studio, I have three monitors. I have a Slate Raven, which is 1920 by 1080, I have a 4K display, which is 3840 by 2160. And then I have basically kind of a TV that connects as a computer monitor. It's an LG, it's 37 inches. And it is also uh, 1920 by 1080. And the 4K, it's great for DaVinci Resolve, for example, because then I can see all the detail. And, you know, I can see the bags under my eyes and the dandruff on my... It's great. It's, it's fantastic. But I don't want to have to change that 4K display in the Mac settings. I would rather be able to deal with that in the scaling of DP so that then I can quit the app and when I'm in DaVinci Resolve or some other app, I can adjust those accordingly. What I'd like to see is a way to incorporate resolution sizes in window sets so that you could have the Slate Raven be at 100%, but have the 4K display be at 150%, something like that. Okay, next thing is info and track counts. I would really like to have a great way to figure out how many tracks I have. How many people have had this happen to them? Some client comes to you, you have this huge project, with all these different tracks. And they say, how many tracks do you have? And so you go and you're like, one, two, 
three, four, and then you're 97, 98, 99. You get to the end, and then the person says, well, how many audio tracks is it? Okay. Well, uh, let me count again. One, two, three, 67, 68. It's not that much fun to try and figure out how many tracks are in a thing. So I had sort of seen that Logic numbers its tracks, and I got excited about that. Then I went and looked at their documentation a little bit, and I realized that it's not really the best thing for what I want, which is just to know how many of a certain kind of track are there. And so I figured out that there is show clipboard. Now, if I go here, and let's say I pick all these tracks, and then I copy them. You have to do that, because it has to be in the clipboard. And then I'll come here, and there's show clipboard. So I'll pick Show Clipboard, and it will show me what tracks are where. Now, yeah, this is great, but you still have the same problem if somebody wants to know how many audio tracks are here. Because if this was a super long list, you would have to get here and just count all these. And this is a minuscule font. I mean, I think it's 10-point font, but it's small on most high-resolution monitors. And so... How could we deal with that? A couple of things come to mind. First off, if I look at this at preview, I just copied that show clipboard at 100%, and here I am looking at the size of this. Now, I think it's 10-point font because I mocked it up in Microsoft Word. So this is pretty much the same size, I think. More or less, right? That's great, but what if it just had a little bit of bolding, a little bit of formatting, so that, and a little bit bigger, so that it looked a little more like this? Now, I can see so much better what's going on here. That's really almost no change. It should be easy to do. Uh, certainly an afternoon. I don't know what it takes, but this is why I'm not programming DP. Now next, what if there was some other information, like data came from seven tracks, uh, conductor, consolidated instruments, cowbell, whatever, whatever. And if you look, they're trying to give you this information because you see the icons over here. Although they're so small, it's really hard to tell what they are. And notice that the mono track looks like a stereo track. So it's better than nothing. But what if it was something like this? At the bottom, there could be a breakout, track totals. Here's how many MIDI tracks there were, here's how many mono tracks, stereo tracks, surround tracks, total audio tracks, instrument tracks, aux tracks, etc. That would be very helpful. The last thing is that if you put something like this on every page, assuming that the show clipboard thing got to be multiple pages, this would be great, so you could have up to the top, down to the bottom, and a page up and a page down so that you could locate quickly. And of course, what made me think of that is that all these track totals would be at the bottom. Now here's one thing that's very cool. Show clipboard is not just show clipboard, it's really show hide clipboard. So if I go in, I'm gonna shift L, or go into setup commands, and just start searching for clipboard, and you can see, here it is, show hide clipboard. Now, it's not assigned to a key command by default, but here I have assigned it to a key command which wasn't in use. So now, I can just pop it up by holding command option shift, and there it is. And then shift option command X again, and it's gone. So that's all. I could just do that, and I would know the information I need to know, and it wouldn't have to be in the front of my screen. And then the other thing is it would be great to also be able to make it to be in a sidebar so that you could have it there all the time if that's what you wanted. Also, keep in mind that in Microsoft Word, I can just go here, circle this, go up to Tools, do Word Count, and it'll show me all sorts of things about this. It shows me how many pages it is, how many words, how many characters, with and without spaces, paragraphs, lines. They've figured out a way in this 
you know, I mean, it's great. It's, <laughs> Microsoft Word is great, but it's not no DP. So anyway, they figured out a way to get all this information into one little box very quickly. Hey, everybody. So we're done for this evening. We will come back next week and finish up with this. The whole video was going to be about 40 minutes long, so I decided I'd break it up into two pieces just to make it a little easier to digest. Listen, let me know if it's helpful to actually put in all this screen stuff, like the zooming and the circles around things. Does that help you? Uh, it's a lot of work, and I love doing it. It's a lot of fun, but just want to make sure that it's going well. Thanks so much. In the meantime, watch what YouTube is suggesting to you now.